thank you so much for agreeing to chat with us today. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about your life as an activist. And the first okay. one is, what events or beliefs in your youth led you to become an activist? Ah, what a great question. I was raised in a family that was not politically active or even aware much of the time. And since I was born in 1952, uh, the civil rights movement and several other movements were just happening all around me. So uh, I didn't realize it, but I was taking all that in. Um, I was noticing that Reverend Leon Sullivan, uh, 10 blocks from my house, was leading protests in Philadelphia uh, against the Tasty Baking Company that wouldn't hire African Americans against, you know, other, you know, community uh, leaders who in Philadelphia were not taking, you know, stepping up in the responsibility of civil and human rights. But I didn't really start acting on that until I think uh, in my uh, junior year of high school, my uh, there was a riot and. Um, the riot actually was part of what was happening all around the country. I didn't know that at the time, uh, but I knew what happened in our school and, and uh, in close quarters in Philadelphia. So that provided a real backdrop of me that there was this great unrest and it wasn't be, being spoken to, it wasn't being addressed. And then for my first year of college, uh, I went to uh, Atlanta for my first year of college. And um, and there they had just desegregated the South, you know, certainly all of Georgia. Um, so all of those incidents that happened when I was growing up began to come back into my purview. And I began to focus on the things that I had seen and stored away, but hadn't really been aware of. Um, and now, of course, you know, in a few years, I would become a musician and begin to meet people like Pete Seeger and Tom Paxton and Richie Havens and people who were out there, Joan Baez, who were out there singing music and passionately advocating for civil rights through their, their music and through their careers. Um, and at the time, I was also beginning to uh, experience uh, some difficulties with race as I began to travel around the nation. And so as audiences made me aware that my presence as, as an African American was either something that was a problem for them or it was a problem getting jobs or whatever the issues were, I began to really focus on what these other folks were saying and began to do more research into the modern civil rights movement, which again was all stuff that I kind of knew uh, but didn't know. So I would say that my childhood, which was really centered in my community, in my church, and the songs that those people were singing and the stories that they were telling really was depositing all of this information in me. And, uh, and this was all called into account later uh, as I began to, you know, make my living as a musician and saw that I could have an impact in the world. It's amazing how sometimes events and things that happen that you don't think are having an impact have a really strong impact. Yeah, they do. It, you know, I keep that in mind as I do performances in schools and in theaters and as I, you know, travel around the country that you never know. And I say often to, to groups of students or, or even adults, you know, I say, you know, you never know when small, some small piece of information is going to trigger something later on in life. So I never take for granted uh, any opportunity to speak to people uh, about issues and to be cognizant of the fact that what I say today may not have a major impact, but that planting that seed makes a difference. What continues to motivate you to be an activist or what guides you and gives you courage? Well, you know, I take a lot of courage from uh, the people who have gone before me. Uh, we often say we stand on the shoulders of giants we stand on the shoulders of ordinary people who, for whatever reason in their lives, decided that they could make a difference. And usually those things are very small. So I look at people like, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks, of course, but people like Fannie Lou Hamer and, you know, people like, you know, Joyce Ladner and, you know, people who a lot of folks don't know about. Uh, I look at their lives and I see the tremendous amounts of obstacles and barriers that they overcame. And I realized because of them, my life is a whole lot easier, even on the days when I think that I'm, you know, really struggling with issues. Uh, what keeps me going? Um, the songs keep me going. 
I gain a lot of uh, inspiration and power through the songs that I sing, both those that I sang growing up, you know, Wade in the Water and Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Around and, and all of those spirituals that show that we have to acknowledge what is not right in the world, but we don't have to live in that acknowledgement. So I just think about the fact that the songs I write, even though I try to point out um, uh, issues and, and try to really make people aware of things, I always try to provide a little bit of hope because that's what those people did. They continued to work through the difficulty looking to the future for hope. So that keeps me going. And then I get a lot of my inspiration and hope from the young people that I encounter. Um, it, whenever I'm performing in a school or I'm performing in a concert, I make it a point to try to look into the faces of the people that I'm singing for. And I get so much power from the young people as their faces come alive, as they realize that these stories of people accomplishing things and, and making these stories you know, the the impetus for them doing something in the world, their faces come alive. They get to get the idea that maybe I can do this too. Um, and I love those light bulb moments. You know, I really love it when you see people connecting that there is a great evil like slavery or human trafficking or, you know, uh, you know, people, children in cages, you know, I mean, whatever the issue is, that they get an inkling of the fact that they have a part in this. So, you know, my inspiration, but I, I never stray far from the music for me um, because the music generates a, a, a vibrational sense in my body that helps me to rise above the simply, you know, talking about or, or complaining about where we are. For those of us who have heard your music, we're very glad that you stay close to that. Thank you. <laughs> what advice do you have for youth activists today? Well, I think the first advice I have is one that I often give when we have students come on uh, the Living Legacy pilgrimages that I give. And that is, as much as it might seem really ancient history, or all, you have to know what has happened in the world. You have to know the history into which you were born uh, and you know you don't have to know that because it's a date and time thing you have to know what the stories are of people connected to those events and what those people did what you know what they experienced and what drove them so i always tell young people to find out about history you know dive in and get the stories but also i i love to say to them you have fresh ideas because you're not tied to that history in a way that many of us will be. So it's important for you to, once you know that history, not to let it limit your thinking, uh, to, to allow yourselves to see the world in a new way, and then to follow up on that. I, I think it's very important for those of us who are older to give space to young people to explore things. Uh, if, we can, if we can help you by giving perspective, on things that we've already tried and that you don't have to try again. That's always important. But maybe there's some little tweak because of new technology or because you are doing this out of a whole new sense of, of meaning or beginning that you as a young person can bring to this. Uh, you know, you look at a person like Greta Thunberg and, and uh, the young people in Parkland, uh, Florida. Uh, the young people who are activists on the front lines of racial or, or you know, labor uh, struggles. They're bringing a whole new sense of power and energy. And I think a lot of times, once we give them a little perspective, we need to get out of the way. That is great, great advice. Thank you so very much, Reggie.